Shalom from the heart of Jerusalem. Soon we enter into Shabbat. That's what I want to really encourage you with the word. As a word for today, Batach le Adonai. Trust in the Lord. Trust in God unconditionally. So hard. Look what happened all around the world. You know, our brethren in China, they eat once per day. And they are really passing through very difficult time because of this coronavirus. And this starting spread all around the world. We need to pray. We need to trust the Lord much more, trusting God unconditionally. The first step of trusting God don't depend on you. We live in the world where trust must be earned and seem to be short supply. But we see Solomon, the famous king who wrote in Proverbs, knew that trust is exactly where we must start. We see in Proverbs chapter 3, 5, my favorite verse, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and learn not on your own understanding. Most of us has faced disappointed, which have taught us that we can only depend upon ourselves. But living the life God has calling us to means and learn that lesson. Instead that we meant to rest in God's understanding, we may know in our minds that He possess or what? Wisdom. Romans chapter 11, 33. Oh, depend on the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable His judgments and His paths beyond trusting, dressing out. But sometimes trusting Him completely like that can be really e impossible because of the situation, my brethren. So each day we must consciously lay aside our own plans and expectations and surrender to His plans, to His desires, to His destiny. What if we don't feel like we can trust Him like that? That's where we step comes in. Second step to trusting the King of glory, Savior and Redeemer, cried out to God. In Proverbs chapter 3, continue verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will what? Make your path straight. Surrounding to God's beginning with our lips and our thoughts. We need more that commitment to depend on Him. We need to cry out to Him to show the dependence. Amen? When we pray, we admit that His ways are higher than our ways. We show that we are leaving our troubles and burdens and dreams in His capable hands. Dreams in His capable hands. In fact, the, the word of the living, the Bible promise that when we reach out to Him in prayer, He always hears us. Amen. Come to open in Psalm. 55, 17. Evening and morning, noon, I cried out in distress, and he what? Hears my voice. Wow. We hand the key of our life to him, and we know that, that he able to lead us, to guiding us, to direct us, but in order for that work, we have to. Third step, run from evil. Run from evil, from darkness, 
from sadness, from depression, from loneliness. In 1 John chapter 2, 16. So much in, his wor in this world can clutter up our relationship with God. John, right of, we see in the fourth gospel, describes that the distress of the flesh and desires of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of our lives. In all other words, our blessing can easily become stumbling block when we think of them as what we deserve of what we need to be happy. Instead, life works best when we remember the true source of our blessing, God, and focus on things that please Him. Proverbs chapter 3, continue verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord God and rebuke or remove the evil from your life. Sometimes the only way to live the life God wants us to live by separating ourselves from bad darkness influence that keep dragging us down. That works best when we start pursuing something else in their place. And we see in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22, flee from the evil desires of your youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of the pure heart. Is that easy? The question, not at all. Fleeing from the evil desires that pull out us means spending a lot of time crying out to God and leaning on Him. But our Creator promised to honor our commitment to Him when we are really rebuke the evil. And we continue to see in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 8. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. When we pursue Him, we find life, abundant life, my brethren. Running from evil and pursue God does come naturally to most of us. Instead, it means we are, have to make serious change. And first step, put always God first in your life. No matter what situation, put God Almighty, the number one in your desires and your vision. It's eased easily, but it's not. Put yourself first with something good happen. We want to congratulate ourselves with reward. When something bad happen, we want to console ourselves or find someone to blame. In order, in other words, we often have miscentric starting place. And when it comes to money, struggling is even harder. Are you with me? But Solomon, the king, and had quite a bit willed himself, knew that his money don't belong to him. Look in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruit of all your crops, then your bars will be filled to overflowing and your vans will bring over with new wine. Wow. If we can trust the Abba Father, God, creator of the universe, with first of wealth, we truly showing how much we totally depend on Him. Handing over the first part of the paycheck takes Huge amount of faith, after all. But doing so means being God-centering. 
together to make sure. The fifth step, check yourself by God's word. Amen? Let be, let be honest today, my brethren. We are so good at valuing yourself. We are really always put ourselves in higher position. I call this always self-center. We'll go to great excuse or behalf, our behaviors, our actions, and our sin. We need to defend a thorny when we can pretty much find reason for any bad thing we do. The prophet Jeremiah, very clear, speak to us today. Capture this very well. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure who can understand it. Wow. If you're ever going to truly trust in God and flee evil, we stand where we stand. We have to find object, measure, tell us the truth. And that truth comes from God Almighty on His Word. Only. Of course, that doesn't mean we are always like what we see or how we see it. Look, continue in Proverbs chapter 3, 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent His rebuke. Wow. That's right. Sometimes it takes something bad happening or seeing yourself in bad light before we finally admit that we need to change. And the more we are in the Bible, the more like this is to happen. Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. When we have scriptures planned firmly in our hearts, God will often use that to deal with us. Amen? We must what? Listen the Holy Spirit. When the Savior Jesus Christ, this is the sixth step, Listen, Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. When the Savior Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to the church, He told His disciple that this counselor will be their spiritual compass. Or like in the modern language, GPS. We see in John chapter 14, 26. But the counselor... The Holy Spirit, whom Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Wow. As we go through our day-by-day -day life, this same Holy Spirit guiding us, direct us too. That means we don't have to go alone in the battle or hope we are getting in the right. No. Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, lead us into all truth. And what? Protecting us by discernment, wisdom, and anointing. Second Timothy chapter 1, 14. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, who lives in us. Wow. Very powerful verse. After all, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to us believers reminds us that we can truly, what? Rest in God's unconditional love. Wow. And I received the Lord 30 years ago. What I receive? I receive unconditional, unshakable, unstoppable, uncompromised, the first love. And you know, when you receive the first love, you are not anymore feel dis dis uh, depressed, lonely, disappointed, no more. Because what? You rest in God's unconditional love. 
When we face a difficult world each day, we can sometimes wonder if God even cares. Look at the situation all around the world. Viruses, tsunamis, earthquakes, fire. We're really in the shaking world. Something going on. If you really come sometimes wondering if God even cares, why do bad things happen in this world? Where is God when I need him? But look at the King Solomon remind us that God never take a break or leave us to fend ourselves for ourselves. Proverbs chapter 3 continue verse 12. Because the Lord discipline those he loves as the father, the son he delights in. Wow, it's a tremendous verse, my brethren. Supernatural, encouraged word. Even the midst of struggles and pain and turmoil, God stick with us and use those challenges to shape us. When we understand that our perspective completely change. No longer do we see our failures, struggles, bankruptcy, loneliness, pain. You know, remember joy is our salvation. But the devil Lucifer wants to steal the joy and he wants to put you. You are sad, disappointed, you are a loser. But in God. When God, loving Abba Father, works in us, oh, you don't have these bad thoughts and bad feelings. And that's exactly why we can trust in the Lord with all our hearts. He cares for us each and every day. He gives us what we need to stand continue. He pour blessing after blessing upon us. Of course, following each of these daily steps is not easy, my brethren. That's why the Savior Jesus Christ said, we have to deny ourselves and follow Him. Matthew chapter 16, 24. Trust in God and take all commitment, all this covenant relationship with Him. But we never, never, never alone. Amen. And the last verse for today, Matthew chapter 26, 28, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. And we read most of the in the end. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Hallelujah. Come, we praying right now. Heavenly Father, here we are, bow down before you. Crying to you, Majestic King, Savior and Redeemer for this world. Look what happened around the world. Earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons. Oh, Lord, sicknesses and diseases. Earthquakes, Lord. Oh, Majestic King. Protect the world from calamities of lava of volcanoes. Protect this world, Lord. Save this world. Use us to be the channel of love, channel of hope, healing channel, Lord. And the hopeless situation, Lord, we want to be there. Used by you tremendously in these end times. Lord, special I am living in the heart of Jerusalem. I am intercessor. Prayer warrior. I'm not only pastor, bishop, doctor. I am intercessor. You call me to be your vessel in this end time. Use me, Lord. Lord, everyone who listened this short message of trust, I pray, Lord, you are touch every heart extraordinary, supernaturally, Lord. The precious holy blood heal, restore, renew. In the name of Majestic King, the Prince of Peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. B'Shem Av, Ben, V'Ruach HaKodesh, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Majestic King. 
We're proclaiming right now you verse what you're giving to us. Aaronic declaration in Numbers chapter 6, 24. Adonai ve'ishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha ve'ichunecha. Isa Adonai panavelecha ve'yasim lecha shalom. Because you are the Prince of Peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you everlasting peace. Because you are our Prince of Peace. Yes, and Amen. The Savior, the Redeemer, the Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. With you today, Pastor Danny Rosen, with the word of encouragement. Shabbat Shalom, my brethren. God bless you from the heart of Israel, from Zion, from Jerusalem. Amen.